Hey everyone, you're here with Matt. Today we're going to look at 10 old photographs that would still win awards today. Now you might not know this about me, but I am a photographic judge for a whole bunch of competitions and that included some formal kind of training through the Australian Institute of Professional Photography and that's made me a better photographer and a better judge. Hopefully we can put some of that into practice today. James Stanfield, heart surgeon after 23 hour long heart transplant taken in 1987. Well, one of the things that you look for is narrative in these award winning kind of images. And this one has it in spades. Like look at this, the blood and this other liquid on the ground here. Um, then you notice this person sleeping in the background because they're exhausted. Then the look on the surgeon's face, they don't even need to look at the camera. They're purveying so much. The way that the hands are holding the glasses. You've got the subject here with the brightest part of the image kind of leading your eye up into this area because it could otherwise be a little bit easy to uh, miss. Now, I know that sounds strange, but when you've got these people with their faces to the camera, instinctively we want to look at that. Another thing that's working well is there's some separation between these objects on the edges of the frame and the people. So that's working pretty well, whereas it could have become distracting. I think overall definitely would win an award today if it were entered into some sort of competition. Philippe Halsman, Dali Atomicus, 1948. Now I think this is all taken in one frame, which is quite ridiculous. If you look closely, you can kind of see there's wires. There's a wire here. You can see an assistant. They're throwing in this chair into the frame. He appears to be leaping and then somebody probably down here has thrown a bucket of water up. Then somebody else has thrown some cats. That's crazy. That's a lot of work that's gone into this image. And what I really appreciate is this photograph is really about complementing your style and creating a photograph that is suitable for this person. You know, you don't want a simple portrait. You want something that really says something about him. And all of this kind of chaotic surrealism and different things going on really adds to that. What I wouldn't advise these days though is throwing cats. Please don't do that in your studio. That's probably not very nice. But otherwise, what a shot. I even like the fact that you can see kind of engineering of the shot within the shot. It somehow adds even more. Number three. Whew. Oh uh, yeah, pretty intense shot and quite a famous one as well. Eddie Adams, Saigon Execution. And it is the moment that this person is being executed on the street. It's almost like you can see the trigger being pulled in this photo and the person on the left almost kind of flinching along with obviously the main protagonist that you can see who's also flinching. Yeah, pretty awful times. One thing that's probably underappreciated in this image just because everything is so visceral already is that the background is actually working really hard. I mean, you can tell a lot about what the place was like from uh, what's going on in the background here. And it's not visually confusing, but it's there to support the greater scene. Yeah, very powerful. All of the technique in the world doesn't matter if you don't have the moment. And this is the moment. If I were being pedantic, and I, I don't mean to be in a documentary perspective because capturing this as it is, as an achievement and having the composure to capture that in the moment. But if we're being really picky, don't love the fingers chopped off here. Uh, and the little watch on the edge of the frame here is a little bit distracting. And then you've got this mark here is a little bit distracting. But those are the kind of things that you think about when you're constructing an image, not when you're capturing one live. Number four, one of my favorite photos of Ansel Adams. Very classic landscape, but beautifully done. This river kind of takes us on a visual journey through the frame. It's got such an alluring shape. It takes us to this space here. Now, I actually think this area here is a little bit too strong because of how bright the light is there. I'd like the light to pull us just this way a little bit more. But that said, I still think this would probably scrape through and get some sort of low award in landscape photography now. And I don't mean that as a slight because this photograph, it's 80 years old. Landscape photography has come a long way. And for this to even be in the conversation for winning an award is pretty amazing. Number five. With portraiture, expression is everything. While this is a very simple portrait, 
and almost anyone could replicate every part of the image, but they can't replicate this. The intensity of that look is what carries this photograph and has carried it for such a long time. It's absolutely timeless and iconic, and it would be if it was taken today as well. Uh, one thing that's working really well for the photograph that doesn't come up quite as often is the color scheme. You've got these greens here in the undergarment that's showing through. You've got these greens here in the background, transitioning into more of a kind of cyan color. And then you've got the beautiful green of those eyes. And there's also orange in the eyes, green, blues, and every part of the image, it feels like it's been colored to match her eyes. And her eyes are the most important part of the photograph. If I saw this came up today in a competition and I had never seen it before, I'd be excited about it. Number six. Hmm. Yeah, one of the things that you really like in award photography is mood and atmosphere. Because when you're talking about awards, you don't want to talk about the basics. You don't want to be like, oh, they chose the right aperture or the right shutter speed. You want to talk about atmosphere, mood, story. Uh, what is it making you feel? And this photograph has a real mood to it. The lighting on his face, despite the fact that he's wearing a hat, is quite beautiful. Tones have been beautifully handled. It's great black and white. What I would say these days, in terms of distractions, is I find this little corner here a little bit distracting. It could have been darkened down even within documentary guidelines. This fence here is a little bit distracting. However, it is fairly important in giving the image some story and context. It makes it more of a home visit or this person is coming to a place or leaving a place. You don't want them just walking through the field with the suit on, doesn't really make sense. I also find this little block here quite distracting. Possibly moving the camera to the left might have helped with that, but then it might have, you know, stuffed up the composition in other ways that we never know. But overall, beautiful image, great mood. Number seven, yeah. So when it comes to sports photography, it doesn't get more iconic than this. Even if Muhammad Ali was nobody and this wasn't an important moment in history, this photograph is still spectacular. The photographer, Neil Leffer, has captured that moment just perfectly. And doing it on film, you've got to make sure that you're not running out of film or you've got multiple cameras to be able to capture it so that when the fight is over, you've still got some film left to make sure you've got this and you haven't used it all up during the fight. I've shot a lot of kickboxing myself and you do try and choose the best position in the ring based on the lighting and other obstacles, what might be going on in the background. But whew, he got really lucky with having this moment facing directly to camera. So good. These other people, they would have just gotten the back of Muhammad Ali's legs and possibly gotten a photo of the fallen fighter, Sonny Liston. But it just wouldn't have been as good. And what's working really well is that we can still see the face here. You know, obviously we've got fantastic expression up here. And then what adds detail that gives the photograph longevity is what's going on in the crowd here. Like, look at all of those expressions. Really interesting. You could spend a long time just looking at that. Number eight. Whew. Uh, so, Stanley Foreman, Fire Escape Collapse. I believe this won World Press Photograph in either 1975 or maybe 76. I'm not sure. Something like that. Uh, when people talk about capturing the moment, geez, this is capturing the moment. And um, I think the people may have survived, or one of them did. Oh, I don't know. But it's pretty harrowing. In some ways, it's almost a relief that this face has been covered over by the arm, uh, bracing for impact. And then this person up the top here, the little child with their limbs out, and they're almost framed within this window up here, which gives them separation that you wouldn't have otherwise. What's also interesting is the angles created by all of these falling fire escape. Ooh, yeah, that's, uh, that's a rough photograph. Really interesting, even the falling pot, the pots here that were on the fire escape and all the soil coming up. This would definitely win awards today. I mean, you just can't beat that kind of moment from a photographic documentary perspective. Uh, certainly not wishing it on anybody to experience it. Number nine. Okay, so we've got a really classic portrait here, obviously of a very tough character. 
Uh, from what I understand of Yusuf Kash, he actually pulled the cigar out of Winston Churchill's mouth and then quickly took this photograph while apologizing. And that's why we've got this such a fantastic expression. Now this was done in 1941 and I have heard of portrait photographers talking about eliciting a reaction from a portrait subject even today within the last 10, 20 years. But I think in a lot of ways Yusuf Kash was a bit of a portrait innovator and certainly he was a master of portrait light. Just look at that light on the face and even though you've got this beautiful shadow on the left, you still have just a tiny bit of highlight coming through on that light. So good. The one thing that I would probably complain about, and it'd be very hard to manage with a character like Churchill, but we don't really want that paper there. We don't really want what's going on in that space there either. Those things are a little bit distracting, but it's still the work of a master. Number 10, our final image. What have we got? Ah, okay, so we're featuring a local legend, Peter Dombrovskis, who's Tasmania's most famous photographer and probably Australia's most famous photographer of the landscape genre. His work helped protect the Franklin River in Tasmania during elections. That was how strong his landscape photography was in terms of connecting the people with some of what's going on in nature over here. This is probably one of my favorite photographs of his. There's just something so beautifully delicate about this tree and all of the character about it, the beautiful light dusting of snow that's adding texture to the foreground and kind of defining these edges of the tree. Does it get much better than that? Sometimes simplicity in landscape is where it's at. What's working out really nicely with this weather that he's gotten is that there's such a beautiful separation with what's going on on the opposite bank that just really allows us to appreciate this tree. If you took this photograph in more standard weather or even during a sunrise or sunset, you just wouldn't get this or anything that's nearly as good. As a landscape photograph, I think this is still of an award-winning quality today even though it was taken in the 1980s. All right, thank you everyone for joining me today. Now, let me know what your favorite photo was down in the comments, or where I've stuffed anything up, said the wrong thing about one of the photographs, or maybe you've got a bit more of a story that you want to share. Whatever it is, leave a message. I'll try and get back to you, and we'll see you next time.